All right. So the Padres, we haven't seen a ton of connections them with certain players on the trade market, but John Morosi was on MLB Network on Hot Stove this morning talking with Matt Vaskersian, and he mentioned the Padres with Alec Manoa and potentially being a link there. I guess the Padres have shown interest in Alec Manoa. Here is John Morosi on that, and then I will give my thoughts on it. In 2023, the regular season, can he be a starting pitcher over the long fullness of the 2024 regular season, or is it more of a hybrid role for him? And this, of course, transitions us to the next topic, which is what does this mean for Alec Manoa? And you see him there. Manoa's still right now in the fifth spot of the Jays' rotation because we're not sure, again, if Yadiel will be able to pitch for a full six months in the rotation. And yet, we do know there have been rumblings of trade conversations between the Jays and other teams this offseason. The Padres are one team that I would mention because Manoa was able to come back at least after a really tough start to the year. Get sent to the minor leagues. He was able to work his way back to the major leagues. Did not have a ton of success. But in my experience watching him, it wasn't as though he was non-competitive. He just didn't have his good stuff in 2023. And he was often a pitch or two away from getting out of jams, but things tended to snowball for him. So I, I think a team like San Diego, big ballpark, National League, different venue, different change of scenery entirely, I can see that type of a situation being very advantageous for Manoa. That being said, the Jays are not just going to give him away because he does still have value to him, uh, value to the organization. I'll be curious, though, Matt and Anthony, if we see the Jays maybe add to their offense by trading Manoa, but the deal's going to have to make sense and probably bring back a little bit of AAA, 4A type pitching depth because they can't count on Rodriguez being a starting pitcher for 170 innings, let's say, in 2024. All right, so the end there that John Morosi talks about, AAA, 4A pitching depth. When I see the Padres be connected, oh, maybe Alec Manoa, I don't see a trade fit there. Like, the Padres, so are they going to give, maybe they give the Blue Jays Yara Ariarte because he's almost ready, I would think, to come to the big league level. If you go look on the Padres' top prospects page for MLB.com, they have Ariarte as MLB expected time of arrival 2024. So maybe that's a guy that goes to the Toronto Blue Jays. What I'm thinking is maybe a three-team trade because the Blue Jays, sure, they probably want pitching depth, but they can get that elsewhere. They can get that with desperate pitchers that don't have a team and an invite to spring training, and they can become pitching depth. I mean, the, we might see the Padres do that as well. The Blue Jays, I think, don't they want to try to add one more lefty bat at least? You look at their lineup right now. George Springer's a righty. Bo Bichette's a righty. Vlad Jr.'s a righty. Danny Jansen, righty. Davis Schneider, righty. Dalton Varsho is a lefty. Kevin Biggio is a lefty. Alejandro Kirk is a righty. Kiermaier is a lefty. So they don't have a ton of lefties there. Adding Kiermaier back created a lefty. Another lefty there brought a lefty back there for the Blue Jays, but maybe they want a left-handed bat and another team might have that. That's where, again, I don't see the fit there. Like, so high like pitching depth that's ready to go. The Padres don't have a lot of that, right? And they want to keep that because injuries happen. Do would the would the Blue Jays take Pedro Avila as the main pitcher back in that deal? I don't know if they do that. Like there's a question mark with Avila as well. They're going to take Matt Waldron. Maybe the Padres have to give up Randy Vasquez or Johnny Brito. But would you make that move if you're the Padres? When you have like the entire rookie contracts, I think, of those guys. Manoa, he's under contract for four years. So I guess they have to judge, do they believe in Manoa's upside more? Or do they not want to take that risk and they just want to go with Vasquez, Brito, have both of them in that pitching staff for Mike Schilt, for Urban Niebla. So those are some things the Padres have to weigh. Maybe it's a three-team deal where the Blue Jays want something. Another team can, like, let's say the Mariners, right? Because I think, I'm not, I know it seems like I want ha Sung Kim out of town. That's not, like, I think it needs to be the right return. But maybe, like the Mariners, they have pitching depth. That's a team that I look at. They've got young pitching depth. Maybe they trade one of them to the Blue Jays. Blue Jays give Manoa to the Padres. The Padres give someone like Kim 
to the Mariners. Maybe the Padres need to get someone back as well from Seattle. I don't know who that would be, but I'm just trying to throw out some three-team deals there. Maybe the Marlins jump in on this. I just don't see really, unless it's prospects that they're okay with that we're not thinking about, the Blue Jays getting back, I just don't really see how the Blue Jays and Padres are a great fit on an Alec Manoa deal. And as John Marusi said today on MLB Network on Hot Stove, like the Padres aren't going to be able to just get Alec Manoa as a, a giveaway. He has four years left. That's a lot of time for the Blue Jays to try to get Manoa back to being who he was in 2022. I mean, look at the numbers. 2023 had a 5870 ERA. So one, that's a risk for the Padres. Ruben Niebla can't fix everyone. Now there's talent with Alec Manoa, though. It's not like he was talented in the minors, didn't show it at all in the big leagues, and we want Ruben Niebla to fix him. So I guess that's good news there. He had a 224 ERA in 2022. All-star, over 30 starts, almost 200 innings, top three Cy Young. He was great. Top 10 in the rookie of the year in 2021, but then 2023. He fell off, and he got sent all the way down back to Florida to work, I think, on backfields where they could control the pitch count and the environment. And then they gave him a chance in the big leagues, and then he got sent down, I think, to Buffalo. And then they put him on, like, the inactive list, temporary inactive list on September 4th. So was it mental there? Because... I I'm, I think it's something not just pitching, because if it was just pitching, then they'd keep working all year to try to get Alec Manoa right, right? So that you can go into the offseason feeling really good, like you pitch well, even if it's just in the minor leagues or if it's on backfields. You saw results, good. You can be confident going into the offseason. But for them to put him on the inactive list in September, like, is it mental? So was he not putting in the work necessary. I don't know. Like I'm not accusing him of doing that. I'm just wondering like what was going on there. What it just doesn't seem like it was just physical. Like, oh, they gave up on him in 2023 on the mound and just said, all right, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go into the offseason and see what we can work on. You'd think that they'd try to keep working on it in 2023. So what was it? Maybe it was just him pitching, and they just decided, you know what, we're in a playoff race. Let's just worry about you in the offseason. I don't know. Maybe maybe something needed to be worked on with Manoa that we don't know about because I've. you'd think that it would be reported by one of the national guys, right, Some, if something was happening with Alec Manoa. So I'm not going to go more into speculating on what happened last year with Manoa. I just know the numbers were not Alec Manoa in 2022. And he is he was viewed going into last year, I think, as one of the like top pitchers for the Blue Jays, right? And then if you look at his game logs this past year, he had some pretty solid outings. I think there was an outing where he went seven innings and either gave up no runs or gave up one run. Like there was at the beginning of the year, there were some spots there where it was like, okay, there's there's the Alec Manoa. He's good. And then things just fell off. And it has to be bad for them to send him all the way back to their spring training complex, right? So it would be a risk. That's my point here, I guess, is it would be a risk for the Padres to acquire Alec Manoa and then give up some. Like, what would it be? If they give up a minor leaguer and it's not Lesko, Snelling, someone like that, and you have four years of control for Manoa, I mean, that would seem pretty good, in my opinion. The upside there, work with Ruben Niebla, fresh start, motivated to prove people wrong. If there are doubters, I'm sure he's seen doubters on social media and all that. So I guess it would be low risk acquiring Manoa. I just hope that this isn't a situation where the Padres believe in him so much where they give up too much for him. You know? Something happened. I don't know what it is, but that that was weird what happened this past season. So I hope that he gets back on the right track. I really do, because he is fun to watch. I mean, he was fun to watch in the All-Star game, being mic'd up in 2022, striking out guys when telling, like, what was coming to the broadcast. Like, that was funny. Seems like a good personality. And it is a fit. I mean, 
if you just look at like the contract, four years of control, okay, controllable guy, talented. He's shown it at the big league level before. He's not making much money. He's on a he's he's still in his last year, I think, of uh, pre arbitration. Now the number is going to go up next year, but for this year with the Padres with the budget, like he makes sense financially. Are the Padres in a spot to take that risk though? With other question marks that they have, right? With Darvish and Musgrove coming off of injury. King, I don't think, I guess there's question marks with him because we just haven't seen him as a starter in a full season, kind of like Lugo this past year. But I don't think there's, I don't think Michael King is viewed as like this big question mark. But the back end of the rotation, I mean, who's the four starter? Don't know that. Who's the five? Pedro Avila, if you put him in there, how is he going to do in a full season as a starter or in an attempt to do that, right? Randy Vasquez, Johnny Brito, I think there's a little bit of an unknown there. Maybe not with the Padres because they've seen video and they've watched these guys. But I'm just talking about from you know the Padres fan perspective. So maybe you should go with someone that had a little bit better of a year this past year and bring that person in. But maybe the Padres, they don't have to give up much. But then the Blue Jays, they, they want pitching depth, like John Morosi said. So it's going to be interesting to, to monitor here. Do the Padres acquire Alec Manoa? Does Alec Manoa get dealt? Or do the Blue Jays believe in him? They sell high on him, meaning like, or I should say, they expect high back, high value. So they just don't trade him because no one matched that. It's going to be interesting. But yeah, the Padres, obviously, they need pitching. And again, like financially, it would make sense. 